Hey guys, welcome back to Arsenal Career Mode. We are doing something slightly different in this episode. Towards the end, we are going to do something called the Episode Awards. So hang around for the whole video and you will see at the end exactly what that is. But until then, we've got three cracking games coming up. Firstly, against Manchester City. Now, last episode, I did mention a few times that we've made a, a relatively good gap at the top, when actually it was only three for five points, I think, at max. So uh, really not as big of a gap as I thought. But that's all right, because this game is against Manchester City. They're in the top five, and uh, winning this game means, you know, another three-point gap between Manchester City and I. I think it'll make it about seven or eight in total. And you can see I'm absolutely <laughs> changing this team up for this game, putting up all my strong players, in including Koch there. And here we'll take a look at the lead table. We are on top at the moment, level on points with Spurs, but we have a game in hand, which is good news because we can then extend our lead to three points once again, above major rivals, the Mighty Spurs. I'm not allowed to call them the Mighty Spurs, am I? Because I'm an Arsenal fan. Uh, even though technically they are a bit more mighty than Arsenal this season, that's for sure. But anyway, we're going to kick off this game with a little bit of a sweaty, so feel free to uh, to leave a comment. Um, geez, why are you so sweaty? And also close your eyes during the replay because it can, it can cause a stinging effect. So uh, I would recommend closing your eyes. There you go, you can open them again now. The sweaty guy has gone. However, there may be another one in this game. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, Doombia passes over to Gabbiadini here. Not really a sweaty when it's like that because that was that was a pretty difficult goal to score, right? That kind of volley. And it uh, didn't quite work out for Gabbiadini there. <clears throat> but that's all right. We've got the ball back here and it's going to go flying over. When the, the pitch is wet, I just seem to find it much harder to score. It's like the ball skids off my foot more. Um, get really lucky here. Chesney pulls off a double save there. Great, great work from the goalkeeper there. Pulled him out nice and early, and that meant we could go in at half time. 1 0 up against a very good Manchester City team with Wilshire. Obviously, I'm looking to bring him back one day, like I've said. Balotelli, Asamoa, and Case Miro all come on in the second half straight away. Um, there was something about my team, it just felt tired. It felt like I was slow, and it, I really wanted these three points, so I thought. I've got to really go for it. And here we go. Close your eyes, guys. Another sweaty, but this time it's not me. Actually, open them. I want you to watch this because it wasn't me. And this makes it makes me feel better knowing that it's not just me doing it. If they're going to score a sweaty against me, I'm going to score sweaties against them. And what's wrong with a sweaty goal against freaking CPU anyway? But we get a ball through to hit, through here to Rene Koch. And look, I mean, as if you're going to catch him. He has 90, I think it's 97 acceleration and 98 sprint speed. I mean, there is just... No chance. There's not a defender in this game that could catch up at that point. So it looks like they're really slow, but actually it's not that. It's that I'm just lightning quick with Koch and we actually win the game. 2-1 thanks to a brace by Rene Koch. I'm saying his name way too much. It makes me feel a little bit gay. Um, oh my God. The other episode when I said I prefer Koch instead of uh, Royce. The amount of bloody comments I got from you guys saying I sound gay. Uh, anyway, Axel Witzel. Really good news. Now he, he was saying he was unsettled and that you know, there might be a few offers coming in for him. But he has said that he's decided he wants to stay. He wants to make it his new home and repay the faith that I showed in him. Which is nice to know. Um, but anyway, we are in the transfer window now. Now, normally I do that live. I normally do the whole January month live so I can talk you through my, uh, my thoughts and processes when buying players. But I thought this time I'm not going to worry about it too much because there's just one player. My, my team is so strong. There's only one place that I really need to, you know, watch out for in the future. And that is definitely my defense because a few of my defenders are getting kind of old. You've got Richard and Ogbonna. They're both 28 now. And this guy here, Philip Avramov, he's 22 years old and he's 83 overall. And uh, he is expensive, like 17.5 million. So at first here, I offered Thompson, who's worth around, th I think, 12 million, 13 million, plus the 3.5. So not quite exactly what they need. Um, and that's why I've asked for some money here. But I thought, you know what? Maybe they'll let him leave because his contract is expiring soon. And I thought they will just accept a relatively good deal. So we're going to request a little bit of money here, 4 million, because I know I'm probably going to get a, a message back from them saying it's just not too much. Uh, not enough even and then they come back the Arsenal ball come back saying we can only offer three 2.3 million so I thought you know what it's better than nothing I'll accept it and I can use that to uh, to buy Avramov now here Witzel does get an actual offer here um, they have PSG the richest club in the, the French league have offered 18 million he's worth 25 so I thought you know what I don't want to sell him I really don't he's gonna be probably the next 90 rated player in my squad I'm gonna counter off a 35 because I probably would take that and that way I can get that defender 
Um, because in midfield, I've got so many midfielders that sometimes it's actually difficult to decide who to play because I've got so many choices. So I thought I could lose a midfielder and gain a defender. But anyway, we go into a game against Chelsea here. There, there is that three-point gap that I wanted after the Spurs game. So I went into this game knowing that if, even if I lose, it's really not the worst thing in the world. And Chelsea have got a very good squad in my career mode here. You know, Falcao, they've got um, one of those regen players. Absolutely insane. There's a really good shot from Casemiro there. If you missed that, I'd really recommend going back. It was a hell of a save from uh, Peter Cech, Petr Cech there. Gabbiadini with the double header, the first one coming off the crossbar. A little bit unlucky there. But that's all right. We'll come back and uh, we'll get revenge. But here we go. It goes out to Sturridge here. And he's going to smash that ball well over the top of the goal. And that is pretty much the only chance Chelsea had in the first half. Now we're going to cut into uh, the game here. 45th minute. Gabbiadini goes through. Weak foot. Yeah, it's going to be the same as Sturridge's weak foot shot before. Um, and that means we go into half-time nil-nil. It was a relatively open match, not too much going on. And I thought, right, again, I'm going to change it up nice and early. Let's bring on Balotelli, Koch and Kara. All very good, powerful players. Obviously, Koch isn't exactly tall, but he's still powerful, so quick. And uh, he sets up a chance here straight away with Gaviadini. He tries to score a finesse shot, but he couldn't quite wrap it around Petacek there. But who's on hand to pounce and knock it into the net? Now, I don't know how this happened. You're going to see in the replay here that... He seemed to be the only player that stretched for it. It's like the Chelsea players let me score. Have a look at this, right? Go for the finesse shot, which luckily gets, kind of gets past him. It was going to go wide. But just look at this replay. It looks as if all of the Chelsea defenders kind of just let it go in. I don't understand it. Look. I, I honestly don't understand that. But I will take a goal any day, even if it is scrappy like that. And that makes it 1-0. Now, Gabbiadini, very pacey, very strong. He's going to cross this back to Balotelli and that is a great goal a really beautiful goal from Balotelli he hasn't scored too many since joining mainly because I tend to play Gabbiadini um, well I have played Balotelli but I've been playing Royce a lot more recently and Dumbia obviously has been in form lately so I haven't really played Balotelli enough now watch this fail I don't know what was wrong with me I tried to pass it out to the left and I ended up dropping it you don't need to see that again that's just embarrassing but we win the game 2-1 luckily I scored that last minute goal with Balotelli because Raul Morales could have could have made us drop two points there, so we got lucky. But anyway, we get the bad news back that I was expecting from Bayern Munich, saying that they're not interested in the player and the money is not enough. So I thought, right, one more offer because there's just no way I'm able to give away any of my other players. It has to be someone who's, you know, barely used. So maybe Juru or maybe Thompson, like I tried. Um, but then I thought, you know what? I could I could try Koscielny. He's 30 years old. He's starting to reduce in, in stats here. So I'm going to go ahead and add Koscielny to the deal. And I thought... Koscielny's worth around the 10 million mark. Do I give them five? Do I give them six? And I thought five and a half million plus Koscielny, they might just go for it. And PSG come back and say that 35 is too much of it. So that, that's their loss. I would pay 35 million for him. He's fantastic. And then we move into the last match of the episode. But you'll notice that there's still a long time left in this video. That's because we've got the episode awards at the end, which is awesome fun. But this game against Liverpool was shit. It really is. Now, now, I know a lot of people are going to leave comments about this saying, why is it every time I play against Liverpool, it's snowing? I don't know. It's really random. Every time I have a game against Liverpool, it seems like it's snowing. And uh, what a goal from Gabbiadini. Just off the post there. Another beautiful goal. This time, not Balotelli, but this time, Gabbiadini. His left foot. I've always said this since I bought him. He's almost Podolski's replacement. There'll never be anyone as, as awesome as Podolski. Um, although Gabbiadini has very similar stats. And, well, I'd say he's a little bit more pacey and stronger, but... Um, Podolski's left foot was what made him so good and Gabbiadini matches that for sure his left foot is just it's absolutely fantastic now we get a wayward pass here from Liverpool really poor in the snow the ball just bobbles around everywhere and it's a really poor shot from Ramsey who I decided to bring on in the second half I never used Ramsey I thought why not and then uh, I get pulled back here by Skirtle and he is going to get his second yellow card of the game Red card. See you later, Skirtle. He's had a pretty poor season in real life, hasn't he? Let me know, Liverpool fans, do you think he's going to be leaving? I've heard so much about him going back to Russia, to Zenit, possibly. Will it happen? But we get a free kick outside the box here. Balotelli stats, 90 power, 78 free kick accuracy, and 83 curve. And I thought, you know what? Best penalty kick taker on my team. Let's have a go. But Reina pulls off a fantastic save. But we still get the away points. Three points at Anfield. I will take that. I think that means Liverpool stay in eighth, which is not very good. But we get another email back from Bayern saying that it's unacceptable. They want more money and Koscielny is not someone they're interested in. So I thought, this is, this is going to be difficult. I can't afford to just pay out right like you know right up I, don't, I can't pay 17 and a half million for him so my last ever 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 attempt to get Avramov in this window is Gibbs plus six million and I just don't think they can go I don't think they'll do it I generally don't 
Um, we simmed this match against Hull City. You know, I was easily going to win that one. We get a 3-0, 3-1 win in the FA Cup there. And uh, again, we get the unacceptable back. So I think for now, guys, Avramov, I'm just not going to be able to afford him unless I sell a player. So for now, we think we're going to leave that. But then we get an offer, talking of selling players, for Mika Richards from PSG. Once again, they're trying to bulk up their defence, clearly. Um, but I was thinking here, do I really want to get rid of Richards? I was thinking I could use that money to go for Avramov. And I thought, nah. But anyway, episode, episode awards. Not episode. Episode awards, guys. We're going to do this every now and again. Not every episode, just every now and again. This is the goal of the episode for me. Absolutely fantastic acrobatic volley from Balotelli. I almost chose Gabby Adini's goal in the Liverpool match, but I thought, you know what? This was pretty awesome. It was great work down that left wing by Gabby Adini, who's not known for his crossing, right? And Balotelli is it's a great goal. But now we're going to move on into touch of the episode. Some of these awards are going to be named pretty funny, but look at Ogbonna's touch there. This is a defender in the rain. Look at this touch against Manchester City. Boop. See you later. Straight to Witzel. That was a really, really nice touch. Now, the reason I'm doing this is just to do something different. Something, I don't know any other people that do episode awards, so I thought I'd uh, start doing that. Now we've got the tackle of the episode. Now, this is a crunching tackle from Ogbonna. Oscar down the right wing, but look at that. Perfectly timed. Oscar just had no chance to get that pass. And I got the ball first, so it was not a free kick. Look at that. And now the next award is going to be crunch of the episode, so maybe not a good tackle. Now, bear in mind, this was not a foul. Look at this. Witzel just slides in through the back. I think it's Mascherano. He gets absolutely destroyed here, but I get the ball first. That is not a free kick, although in the real world, I think that would be a free kick. It would be deemed as dangerous play because it is from behind, even though you got the ball. But look at that. That is a crunching tackle. He just gets absolutely taken out. Now we have skill of the episode. It's going to be Rene Koch. Look at this. Scoop turn. See you later. Oh, that was just... When I did that, I had to get replays of it. Just look at this. See you later. I don't know who the hell that is defending, but that is just a really nice bit of skill from Rene Koch there. And now we're going to move on into the last episode award. What's it going to be? It's going to be the lol moment of the episode. Lol. What's it going to be? It's going to be a tackle on Nasri from Asamoah, crunching into the back of him. I almost put that as crunch tackle. But then this happens straight after that, slides into the back of Sinclair, and not a foul was given. The ref didn't give anything for both. Look at this. I give away the craziest, craziest of advantage advantages in FIFA, and this wasn't a foul. But anyway, thank you for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed the episode awards and the whole of the episode, please do leave a like rating. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more Arsenal career mode. Love you.